hello, Renee Fremont here. You guys, this one just kills me. Just to boil it down to the very basic, basic question. And we know, we know why they continue to contact us. The hoovering, their state of mind, what they're after, keeping us on the bench. We know why. What are they thinking? And do they realize the very obvious dysfunction that they're showing? So let me just get this straight, narcissist person. So you were with me and you were trying to get this other person, people situation now you're in that situation you're with that person people whatever and now you're calling me i don't understand that doesn't even add up that doesn't even make any sense for them what are they thinking they're doing it for i don't even understand it and the math doesn't add up for me and let me tell you with it i know i refer to math a lot the reason is my dad is an engineer and he once taught me at a very crucial time in my life to deal with something to do with him in the late 90s. My dad had cancer. He's a survivor. He's here with us today, live and well, living not an hour from me. When he was going through it, I'm the emotional one. Like three people it took to tell me the news that he had it, right? I was devastated. And his brother had passed away from the same exact cancer just a couple of years before. So I was like late 20s in a state of panic. Maybe I was 30 by then, just about. Yeah, I wasn't quite 30. He told me when I was really struggling with it, he said, Renee, it's just math. It's just math. They've given me a protocol. Oh, I'm going to choke up. I have to go a certain amount of times a week. That's math. I have to sit there and get the chemo and radiation a certain amount of minutes every day. That's math. I have to be there at 7 a.m. every day. That's math. It's just math. I just have to get through the math. And he, his mind works. You know, everything's numbers. Everything comes down to math. So that's why I say that a lot. The math doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. You've moved on. You're in a whole new world. Why are you calling me? Again, we know why, but why? And I wanted to say that that obviously because I want you to look at it when it happens to you and you're getting hoovered from that standpoint. What are they doing? You're supposedly off happy as a lark and you didn't want this. When you were here, you wanted that. You pursued that. You were calling that. I'm not calling a person that. I'm saying that world. You wanted that. When you were here, you weren't calling me, spending time with me. You were cutting out at night after dinner and going to get that. So be with that. The reason I bring this up is because it kills me when I look at people, and you may be in this situation right now, and they're getting the phone calls from the ex. And they're coming at you with everything they got. I want you to realize, not we talk a lot about Hoover and how to deal with it, but I want you to realize how it has to be malarkey. It has to be. The math doesn't add up. My narcissist was telling me a year after we broke up, I'll buy a house, I'll put it in your name, I ha I'm coming into money, I'll give it to you. The whole time he's with a girl calling her his girlfriend. She's talking I love you and he's... Why then? What are you telling yourself that you need to keep calling me and telling me these weird untruths? Why bother? Do you think that I was going to swoon now that you are my ex? In a world with someone else, did you think by you calling me and giving me these superfluous, non-intended, untrue promises that I was going to what? Oh, that sounds good. You didn't follow through when you were here. Why do they think that we're that dumb? And then you might say, well, 
we kind of act it, we fall for things. And blah, blah. No, we don't act dumb. We act in love. We act loyal. We thought they were as well. And hopefully once you catch on, then you can start to break away. So I don't want to say that we act dumb. I know we feel it. I know that. I know that. I made, I, made, I made a video once. I think it was entitled, I Just Feel Dumb. I get it. But the math of why they keep bothering us doesn't add up to me. I really want to know what they're thinking. Other than they need us on their bench. They don't think that way. Oh, I can't let her go. I need her on my bench as a bench warmer. So what are they doing? Are they scrambling? Are they already having problems in the new area and they need their ego massaged by a true, tried and true person who has shown it to them before? Is the new supply giving you a little bit of trouble? Just as if I mentioned to you a few videos ago that if you were alone and you started to date someone too soon and you weren't yet over your narcissist, I believe your narcissist would be on your mind to call if the new person hurt you. It was your last familiar place. It was your last place of comfort and knowing where you were. And I just think it's a danger if you date someone too soon and you're not over them, then that blows up. You'd be on the phone seeking comfort, maybe from your narcissist. I think it's the same thing for them. They're onto a new person. We know problems are gonna ensue. And that's exactly why they continue to call us. I watched my narcissist month after month after month. He was with this girl almost a year, still calling me, still coming around, still promising to give me money and buy a house in my name. And I'm gonna live in it and decorate it. And we'll have two homes and I'm coming for you, and you deserve it, and you're lovely and precious, and I'll put you on a pedestal, and no one is like you. Does your girlfriend know that you're telling me all this? Does she know that you're telling me all this? Does she know? And how would she feel? And what are you thinking? I thought you were so happy that you had to blow us up to get where you are. I thought you were so happy and wanted and focused on that, that you were going after that you left this in the dust which that's not really how it happened I wasn't left for that person there was a there was some time in between quite a bit between me and the person that he landed with last I knew for all I know he's on an 18th person since then I have no idea what's going on in his life but I can tell you that when you receive a phone call from your ex-narcissist I want you to think about that. If they're so happy, what are they doing? They're having a problem. They're being ignored. They had a fight. They're out of their league. They, they figured out this person might be too much for them, too good for them. They can't penetrate that person's mind like they could yours. So they're gonna revert back to calling you their place of comfort their place of familiarity where they can get their ego fed. Do you want your ego fed? Do you need me to say nice words to you? I say nice words to you. What do you need to hear, narcissist? Ugh, it makes me nauseous. It makes me nauseous, nauseated. I think is really the proper one that you need right there, right? My point is I cannot get past the fact that they're you know trotting around like they're happy they're trying to make the world think that they're happy they're on the line with the pictures making you think they look happy so why are they calling you why are you calling me go go be happy be false happy because we know that's not real and that's another point of this video you know that's not real they're reaching out to call you, they're dropping a line, they're dropping a hint, they're winking, poking, whatever, on whatever site, email, messenger pigeon, they're reaching out to you. Why? You can bet your sweet bippy that if I were happy with somebody, I'm not reaching out to anybody else. It's disloyal, it's not nice, it's not fair to the new person, it's not something you do. Which shows you the scruples of these kinds of narcissists, they don't have any. 
but it just really bothers me. Don't they look at the math of their own situation and how that doesn't add up? You were so sure that's what you wanted that you betrayed us. Especially if they're with the person, they came off of you and they're with that person. You were so sure you wanted that. You were all about it. You lied to me to get it. You betrayed me to get it over and over, right? You had tactics in place to achieve that. Tactics in place to dupe me, to be disloyal, to get away with it. So why are you calling me now? I want you to look at that if you're being hoovered and ask yourself that question. If you are so darn happy, what are you doing with me? We didn't work. We weren't, you weren't happy here. Oh, but I was. Were you? Were you? Because you're not here. There's nothing stopping you from being here. Well, you may have discarded them. You may have discarded them. But they didn't change their behavior, straighten up, fix their tie, and come in, you know, last second and show you that they are worthy of you. They could have done a 180 with their behavior. We know they couldn't because they're a narcissist. Other people might. You're in a healthy relationship. Things go awry. You discuss it. You both make changes and you move forward. That can happen. Happens all the time. Healthy couples. They get through things. How do you think people make it? You're a narcissist. It makes no sense. They didn't work anything out with you. They didn't change. They're not a new shiny version of themselves that's suddenly going to bring you genuine happiness. And you know that. You know that. They, I think, are just, my dad calls it flopping around. They're flopping. They're flopping. It means somebody is wishy-washy. They don't know which way to go. They don't know where their feet are. They don't have any conviction. They don't have any path in life. They're all over the place. They're flopping around. And the narcissist continues in that vein no matter who they're with. And they'll continue to call anybody that will feed them because they're flopping around. They're not genuinely happy. They might convince themselves that they are. And how pathetic if they convince themselves that they are and they're still calling you. This guy, I think, my guy, my narcissist, I think that girl, from what he told me, was very tumultuous temper-wise. They had some real big blowouts. That indicates to me that she's a passionate person. So I'm sure the good was just as good as the bad was bad. So you can't handle any bad at all. The second it would come about, my phone would ring. And he needed, and I provided it. I provided it. One of the times that he kept calling me and calling me and calling me. 100 phone calls throughout the night. I watched it ring every time. I wasn't going to pick up the phone at 2 a.m., but the next morning, by then, I broke down and I called and I said, what is wrong? He comes over here, bloody hand that I'm tending to. There was a fight in a club with people and he got into it. I have no idea the details because, of course, they're sketchy. So that's the relationship that he was in. It was not going great. Got into a huge blowout left the club, drove three hours to get to Orlando. I never answered the phone or picked up or allowed him. I don't even know where he slept. But the next morning I was like, what is going on? And that was not a year after, more soon, you know, sooner into their relationship. So I let him come over and there he is, bloody hand, a mess. So then you're not happy, but he remained. That's where he's gonna remain. That's where he remained for a while is what I'm saying. With that person, kept calling me so are you happy or not and were you happy or not with me when I say me I include all of you because now you're calling me which makes me that that math of that of someone calling you once you're done the math of that is they miss you they were happy with you they want you back they're reaching out to you they don't love, they don't miss, they weren't happy because they wouldn't have been seeking other things. And why are they reaching out? It doesn't make any sense. And I want you to look at that and think of that every time they call you. Because I, 
I know it is hard to resist a Hoover if you're still in it. I want you to have every ounce of, of strength and push that you need to make it through not responding. That's one of the things I started to think about. I'm like, you're supposedly off with your fabulous life that you used to talk about when nothing ever came true in your imagination was running your life you thought you were this that the other had this deal this deal you're going to fiji you're making seven million dollars you got nothing ever came true of it so now you're living this imaginary nothing ever happens you're not happy life and you're still calling me thank you i needed that validation you've just proven to me how miserable you are if you're still calling me you're still miserable because we were miserable and you acted it every step of the way every time you did something off kilter the fact that you're call allow that to be your badge yep he's still calling me doesn't mean you have to answer that's egg on their face when they do that they're still calling you and they're supposed to be happy give me a break and you don't want to do that to a fellow person if they're with somebody else i didn't want to do that once i realized he really had like a girlfriend once i caught on to the fact that that girl thought of herself as his girlfriend more than what he was just making her sound like nothing that's when i stopped a lot i was like nope keep an eye and ask yourself if they are so darn happy why are they bothering calling you it makes no sense and the math does not add up i just wanted to mention that people i just wanted you to keep an eye on that Please go ahead and hit sub, like, and share. And I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.